So here we are going to do some uh, chi-squared testing and we'll use our TA Inspire to help us uh, get the right answers. And so we'll read the question here. Okay, so straight away to a null hypothesis. A null hypothesis represented by H of naught, H naught. And it's always the same structure. Take your two variables and that is size of dog. Let's do the writing. And the other one is um, time of day. And you always just insert the words are independent. Okay, there's no association between the two. Terrible writing. Okay, that's always H1. H not sorry. The um, the alternative hypothesis is H1, and it's exactly the same language, and you insert the word not independent, as in there's some association with them. Okay, so we see all the figures there. C9, 18, 21, 11, 6, 13, 7, 8, and 9. These are the observed frequencies. The question asks us to perform a chi-squared test, write down a chi-squared value for this. So we have to get into our TI-Inspire, uh, which is here. And we are going to open a calculator page. And we're actually going to open a matrix. Now, we kind of need to have an understanding about how big the table is we're trying to insert. So I'll just grab this here. And we are going to go to uh, Menu. And I'm just make that a bit bigger. That's not very good. OK, that looks all right. Let's just save that. Uh, menu, matrix, vector, and we're going to create a matrix. And we just need to know how many rows and columns there are. So there's one, two, three rows, and one, two, three columns. So that's three by three. OK. And so now we just need to fill in the numbers in the right place. So we've got uh, nine. And you can press the left, uh, left and right arrow up and down. We'll get to the next spot, 18. 21. Oh, that wasn't very good. And it didn't seem to work. Maybe tab will be better. Let's try that. 21. Let's press the tab. Okay, tab's a lot better. And that's 11. Tab. 6. Tab. 13. 7. Tab. 8. Tab. And that's nine. Okay, so that's great, but we need to be able to perform a test on it. So we need to tell the computer where we're storing this. You can see the little store button in blue. Control store. Okay. And notice my little arrows appeared here. We actually want to store the whole matrix. So I just press a little delete. Press the right arrow. Okay, that should work. Control store. There we go. And call it anything you want. I'm going to call it A on this occasion. Press enter. So every time I press A, it should return the matrix. Okay. Now let's just go and do a statistical test. Menu, statistics, statistical test, and we can see a chi-squared two-way test. It's option number eight, a two-way table. And the observed matrix, well, if we plug in here, we should see matrix A. And that's it. So that's a chi-squared two-way test. Our chi-squared calculated value is 4.32783. Uh, the p-value is 0.36, or 36%. That means we'd expect 36% of all chi squared values to be this or bigger. If we kept taking samples from this population, degrees of freedom is 4. And notice we can get the um, expected matrix and the computational matrix from this magic button here. Var, expected matrix. So these are the expected values here, if you're ever asked to use them. And let's have a look at the comp matrix. Bar, variables, and the comp matrix. So this is the individual chi-squared values for each cell once you do O minus E squared. Now you're not going to need that really, um, except on your internal assessment. So both these figures here aren't really needed for exams, um, but they are definitely needed for the actual internal assessment. All right then, let's just go back up to the chi-squared value because that's what we need. So it's 4.33, and that's the three sig figs. So if we go back to here, okay then, so let's go to the next page. So the chi-squared value is chi-squared, and I put little suffix calculated. 
equals 4.33, I think it says. The number degrees of freedom is 4. Now, there's different ways of doing this, but I think the simplest one is the little formula rho minus 1 multiplied by column minus 1. As rows are 3 and columns are 3, that's 2 by 2, which equals 4. That's definitely the best way of doing it. Uh, go on to the next page, let's see what it asks. Uh, the critical value at the 5% level of significance is 9.488, and what conclusion can you draw from the test? I think the important thing here is to get full marks, you need to focus on this, you have to have a reason. Now a reason might be uh, a verbal reason, or it might be through a use of a diagram. I'm a big fan of a diagram, if I can draw it. So on here are chi-squared values, and you know that if we took a sample again and again and again and plotted all the chi-squared values we generated, it formed this shape, a little mound shape. And on here we're going to highlight the critical region. The critical region comprises of 5% of all chi-squared values. And the particular marking point here is the 9.488. This is always going to be given for you on exams. It will tell you the critical value. Okay. Now, this section here is H0, and this section here would be H1. So we're then we feed on our particular value, and our 4.33 would lie here, and it's well within the H0 acceptance region. So our conclusion would be accept H0. And to be very honest with you, if you drew that diagram, that would be sufficient explanation, but you can write a verbal explanation and it would take the form something like this. This would be the chi-squared calculated value is less than the chi-squared critical value. And that would be a good explanation for why you accept H0. It's only when our calculated value is bigger than the critical value, it means it would lie in this critical region. That particular value of chi-squared is so far away from zero and so far away from this acceptable region, we think there's something going on between the two variables in the population. Okay, if we go on to a second question now, slightly different. Take a moment to read it. It's gender versus sport. It's a little bit different. It asks you to find the expected number here. Um, now, you may remember the trick here. What's the expected number of female volleyball players? So one way of doing this might be to say, well, how many females are in the sample? That's 20, 35, 45, 50. So there are 50 females in the sample. Out of the total population of, well, let's see how many males there are. 40, 50, 60, 70. So that's 120. So this is the percentage of females in the actual sample. And how many volleyball players are there? Well, there's 20, 35. So if there's no difference between choice of sport, then we'd expect this is the percentage of females in the sample. We'd expect that to be the number of female players. So we do it that way. Or you remember the shortcut you had? If you want to work out the expected number here, female volleyball players, you would do uh, row total, which would be this total here, multiplied by column total, which would be here, and that would be divided by the total number of people that are here in the sample. So this is 20, 30, 40, there's the 50 there, and here's the 20, 35 here, and the grand total is the 120 people we're in the sample. And so you can see we'll get the actual same amount here. And if we just go to our calculator, and we just do it as a regular calculator here, this was 50 times by 35, I think, and that's divided by 120. And this given me answer as a fraction, we just do press enter again and press control approximate answer that's 14.58 so it's like 14.6 is in there okay we'll just go back to the question here
Okay, next part is this one. And we want the p value. So this looks like we're going to have to go into the, uh, the calculator again and work out the p value for the test. So let's go back to the calculator. And let's just make sure we can see the values. Oops. Get that. And there we are. See those now. Uh, 40, 20, 10, 20, 15, 15. So let's have a look. Menu, matrix and vector, create another matrix. There's now two rows by three. And let's start filling this in. A little bit small, but we'll make it a bit bigger. Okay, so down here we've got I did a good job here, guys. Sorry for that. Let's have another look. Forty twenty ten. Okay, I think I can remember that. Forty twenty ten. There we go. That's forty twenty ten. Let's have a quick peek down there. And twenty fifteen fifteen. Twenty. 15. 15. Okay, this time we're going to store it into a different letter. Control store, or we'll call that, I think, B. Should we do that? Let's call it B. All right, then, let's do the test menu. Statistics, statistical test, chi squared two way test. Observe matrix this time is B. Okay, and we just want to grab that p-value. The p-value is 0 0.0746, 0 0.0746. Okay, let's play from here. So the p-value here, uh, is 0 0.0746. So that's approximately 7.5%. So that means if I took these, if I took a sample again and again and again, I'd expect 7.5% of all my samples to be that particular um, chi-squared value or bigger. So let's draw another picture for this and let's try and come to a conclusion. Uh, distribution would look like this. And we don't actually know the critical value here, like we did before, but we do know that we're conducting a test at the 5% level of significance. So 5% is here. And look, we don't even know our chi-squared calculated value or the chi-squared critical value, but we do know whatever our chi-squared calculated value was, it's going to be somewhere here. So our chi-squared calculated will be here. That's because the p-value for the test is 7.5%, and that means 7.5% of all the area is to the right. So all of this here, I'm sure you now, represents 7.5%. So we're definitely to the left of this chi-squared critical value, even though we don't know what the value is. So state with a reason the conclusion of the test. Well, we accept H0. And the reason this time is that the um, calculated p value is greater than the level of significance of the test. And the level of significance was at 5%. So that'd be one way of phrasing the words as well. 